Terrific. Now, now you all know that uh, in, in the event that we have another presenter, they might be asking you questions. Um, we are going to bring up Mem Computing from UC San Diego. Hi, my name is John Bean. I'm the founder and CEO of Mem Computing. I'm going to uh, educate you a little bit on optimization problems. Optimization problems are the hardest, most complex, time-consuming computational issues that companies face today. Optimization problems, you find the solutions for analyzing big data, scheduling people, resources, uh, routing vehicles, cellular traffic, bandwidth, uh, it's used in gene sequencing computations, uh, portfolio optimization, drug discovery, oil exploration, and optimization problems are the underlying computations that make up all artificial intelligence and machine learning. The problem is, is that with the explosion of big data, these problems, the number of variables and constraints in these problems have grown to the point that they're taxing computing resources. Companies are having to put more and more servers in their data centers, it, uh, they're adding GPUs and very, cost, uh, very costly things in order to get these problems done in the time frame that they need. They're licensing uh, time from uh, very expensive supercomputers. And uh, the problem is, even with all this extra power, they're looking at compute times in the days, weeks, uh, hours, days, and weeks. Right? So it, they're very hard problems to solve. Some of them can't be solved in the time frame that they need because of this. So you, you, but this, the thing is, is computer scientists still need to deal with this problem, right? They've got to solve it for the companies. They need an answer. So what are the tricks and techniques that they use? One thing they do is they'll cut the problem up into smaller pieces, and then they'll solve the, the small pieces and then merge the information back together. Or they'll just limit the number of variables and constraints and get it to the point that the problem is small enough that they can solve it in the time frame that they need. And lastly, even with these cases, with what they do, ultimately they may just shorten the time that it runs. So they, they may limit a time for the computation to say two hours when it could take 12, 24, 48, whatever, but they'll take the best answer they get after two hours. So what that leads to is an approximation, and we're talking about optimization, where you want the best, most optimal answer. If you get an approximation, then what you have is a situation where uh, you don't necessarily know just how good your answer is. You, you know it's good enough or it's the best you can get, quite honestly. And companies are putting uh, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of dollars a year by having teams of data scientists, PhD mathematicians working day in and day out to just squeeze another fraction of a percent out of their optimization product to improve these computations. <clears throat> but approximations don't work in every single situation. Let me tell you about a client that we have. They're a large international shipping port that wants to use a fleet of autonomous trucks to move containers from ship to ship, ship to shore, and ship to rail. Their challenge is that it takes them hours to compute the route for a single segment of these, uh, these trucks, and it needs to be done in real time. Now, they can't use an approximation because then they'll have collisions. So they need an exact answer. So they've licensed with us to build them a solution where we will give them a real-time, dynamic set of routes guaranteed to be conflict-free. And again, this is, we're talking real-time where they can't solve it today. So <clears throat> what is MEM computing? MEM computing, the technology was developed at UCSD by two PhD physicists. They, what they did is they were inspired by the human brain and how neurons work together to collectively solve a problem. And by looking at computational problems, they realized that they could convert these problems to a physics problem and use that collective solution capability and solve this physics problem. Solving this physics problem requires a fraction of the resources that are required to solve the computational problem using current methods. But don't take my word uh, for truth here. We've, had, we've been uh, evaluated by a number of institutions. San Diego Supercomputer Center did a series of benchmarks using our technology where we beat all the, the best technology that's out there. And one of the most uh, interesting uh, problems that we, we solved was one that would take current technology, the best of current technology, years to solve. We solved it in an hour and a half. In another situation, UCSD 
compared us to a benchmark created for quantum computers in accelerating the training of uh, a deep neural network. And in that case, we were as fast as a quantum computer, but our result was actually more accurate and more stable. Most recently, there's a researcher out of Nova Scotia that's working on our technology, utilizing our technology on a set of benchmarks that are out in the uh, world since 2010. They're well known, they're unsolved. There's 25 of them. Companies have put hundreds, if not thousands, of compute hours at trying to solve these problems, and they haven't been successful. We've solved 15 of these 25 it, just in the last few weeks, and the longest it took us was an hour. Again, these have been unsolved for eight years. And lastly, we're working with a researcher from NASA on another quantum computing be benchmark that was done with NASA, Google, NSA, Xerox PARC, and a number of others, where they were doing scaling testing to see how well a, uh, a quantum computer could do with, you know, how far could they get with an industrial size problem. The quantum computer stopped really early, very small problems. We keep up with the quantum computer there, but when the quantum computer stops, we keep going. And we're solving these problems in polynomial time, where even with the quantum computer, their time frame, if they could scale, would be exponential. So we've gained traction. I talked about the, uh, the international port we're working with on an autonomous vehicle problem. We're also working with a company in heavy industry that's a manufacturer. They have two problems they've presented to us that they can't solve. One is the con automating the configuration of welding robots that are used in automobile assembly lines. Right now, they have to do that all by hand. It's all trial and error. It takes them months. With our technology, they're going to be able to do it in minutes. And in another case, with a, a company that actually spoke here earlier today, that we're working with them on an analytics problem that they have, where with an alpha size problem, it was taking them between 5 and 15 minutes to solve. With our technology, they're now solving it in milliseconds. The beauty is <clears throat> that this is totally scalable among industries. When I mentioned all those problems before, what's, what's, what we have here is the underlying computational engine that is solving these problems. So it doesn't matter if it's gene sequencing or portfolio optimization. The underlying computation is, is in, in many cases, the same. It's just the data that's different. So our technology scales among all these industries without any extra effort to do that. And uh, the exciting thing for us is these are all multi-billion dollar industries. We're looking at a TAM in excess of $67 billion. We're not really predicting just yet what our portion of that is going to be. I'm hoping maybe $66 billion. But we do help to enable th them to grow because of being able to solve problems they can't solve today. And we should be able to take a good portion of the growth for certain. And so our go-to-market strategy, we have these engines that are available in a software solution, software as a service, and also SDKs. And that's for data scientists that understand the science behind the problem. They just would take our technology, remove their solver, insert our, our, our solver, our engine, and then they're good to go and they'll license the technology. But we also have a division that's doing these custom solutions, like for the companies I mentioned, where they have problems that they don't know how to solve. And so by doing that, it certainly is more time intensive, resource in intensive, lower margins, but it's gaining us the credibility in these industries so that we can reach other customers as well. We're also in talks with <clears throat> semiconductor companies with the hopes that in the future we can partner with them in order to develop uh, hardware solutions and, uh, and get those into market sooner. And the beauty with the hardware solutions is the things I'm talking about now we'll do in seconds and minutes. It'll be real time, instantaneous in hardware. <clears throat> Our team, uh, I'm joined by the two inventors, Max Deventra and Fabio Traversa. Max is a UCSD professor of physics. He stayed with, the, with UCSD, and he is an advisor to the company. Fabio has joined us full time as our CTO. And uh, my background in, um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, been involved with such companies as Pixis Corporation, EcoATM, and my companies have returned more than $1.5 billion to investors. Uh, we're rounded out by a very experienced and dedicated team with uh, capabilities in business development, 
marketing and computer science. That guy actually has a full-size head. And uh, the vision, um, <clears throat> we want to be the you know, groundbreaking, revolutionizing this computational high-performance computing associated with, with operation, I mean, optimization problems and enabling companies to uh, drive cost savings, significant cost savings to their bottom line and helping them also get their products to market faster. And my ask today is, I'm actually not here looking for money just yet. I'll be raising a Series A in the fall. But what I'm hoping to do is start the relationship with venture capitalists in order to hopefully get from them introductions to industry leaders who have these problems that we could show what we can do with. And uh, that's it. Uh, I'm John Bean, talking about mem computing. Thank you for your time. I've got time for a few, a few questions, if there are any. Yeah. So, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, honestly, I can't tell you. The science is way over my head. It's, it's, Can you tell me and then kill me? If you'd like. <laughs> I could just kill you. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, yes. So, in the example of the automotive manufacturer, it takes a week to month to get over there. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. So we want to do value pricing. Uh, I've, I also my goal is to be expensive. I can do something that nobody else can do. So bottom line, I'm going to be expensive, and I tell them this. And then we want to do value pricing where we sit down with them on the same side of the table and try and figure out where these savings are, what these opportunities are and then negotiate on what we can take away as, as uh, you know, our revenue. So it's, it, I, right now, it's just uh, we don't have specific details yet, but it, it's probably going to be a very intimate negotiation with every single company, spe on these solutions specifically. The SaaS and SDK, that'll be a straight license, time-based, usage-based. Uh, not really. <laughs> Again, the, the, so the science is way over my head on this, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a new technique and technology that they came up with. It's proprietary. It's never been done before. Um, yeah. Competing with quantum computers, or integrate? Uh, we don't integrate with them. We essentially are competing with them. The, tra the traveling salesman is an excellent example. So I talked about vehicle routing, what we're doing for the autonomous vehicles. Traveling salesman is a set, for the people in this audience that understand, a set of NP hard problems that these are the problems that go exponential in compute time as your inputs grow linearly. That's exactly what our technology was designed to solve. We have a, a very strong patent and a, uh, we are a continuation that we're working on. We're being very aggressive on our patent portfolio. Issue. Any factions that are starting to Well, they're, they're certainly the first ones that we're working with right now. Uh, but we're hoping to build the uh, uh, credibility in other industries for and find those data scientists and, and engineers today that are building their own solutions and integrating current uh, best uh, uh, of class technology in order to just, uh, for those, they can just integrate our software. And so we hope to get, to get to those. But we have to build the credibility first because our technology, it almost seems too good to be true. So we're really getting out there and, and trying to prove it. And that's why we're doing so many benchmarks uh, as well. I think I'm way over. Yes, sir. Oh, can I take one more? Or no, no. <laughs> that's, uh, now that was a more lively conversation than uh, more of what we expected here in this uh, this room here.